Alright, hey y'all, what is up, and welcome back to my channel for another part of The Sims 4 Seasons. <laughs> Okay, so today we are back with Wyatt and Stevie, and as you can see, Stevie, um, she's not in the best of mood. She's actually quite enraged, she's furious, she's pissed, and let me tell you why. So, in the last part of Seasons, it was Winterfest. Stevie and Wyatt went to Carter and Claire's for their big Winterfest party. All was well, they was having a great time. Well, towards the end, Claire kind of you know, Wyatt, come back, I need to ask you something, I need to talk to you or whatever. Anyways, you know, Wyatt um, stayed back, talked to Clara. Stevie was kind of waiting at the door, pretending, you know, she wasn't really watching, just, I'm here, I'm, I'm waiting. Well, she kind of noticed that they were very tense, and they kept looking over their shoulder to see if Stevie was, you know, hearing what they were saying and watching them, which obviously got her curiosity, you know, going. She was wanting to know what they were talking about, why they were so concerned with, you know, her seeing and whatnot. So, anyways, they got back home. Wyatt um, and Stevie took care of Ryan, got her ready for bed, and then Wyatt was like, you know what, I'm tired, babe, going to sleep. So, he passed out. His phone started going off, and Stevie was up. Her mind was, you know, going through all these different scenarios of what could have been going on in that conversation between Wyatt and Claire. You know, her insecurity and curiosity was getting the best of her. And it was Claire texting him. And she knows that it's wrong. She should not have invaded his privacy. But she opened the text message, or she didn't even open it. She just, you know, it. it it shows it, you know, when you get a text. And she just happened to look over and read it, you know. And it said, thank you again for the slablet. It means so much to me. You're a great friend. Love you. And that pissed her off. And it was nothing like, um, you know, I, I love you. Or you love me. It was nothing like that. But it was just the fact that they're texting each other. And she knows they're friends. She knows they're friends. But he got her a slablet for he got her a slablet for for Winterfest, for Christmas, and he really didn't get her anything. Uh, he got her a, a jacket, you know, an outfit, and some the boots she's been wanting, but he didn't get her a slablet or anything fancy or expensive, so she obviously just got kind of, you know, upset about that naturally and was like okay well why is he buying her gifts why were they you know acting like they didn't want me to see what's the big secret and don't get me wrong, Stevie is a very beautiful girl, and she is usually very confident in herself because, I mean, look at her. But she's always known that Wyatt has these feelings for for Claire, and it's always made her very insecure, and she kind of feels like an inconvenience almost in his life, like she's holding him back. Yeah, they they had a one-night stand type of situation, and they kind of, well, it wasn't really a one-night stand. They, they've they been friends for a long time, but she ended up getting pregnant, and that was not the plan, and she knows it didn't ruin his life. He's a great father. He loves his daughter, and she knows he loves her. He cares about her, but deep down, she knows that she's not Claire, and there's something there between them that they have not figured out, so she's pissed, very pissed, but at the same time, she can't be in a relationship without knowing the truth. So once Wyatt gets home, I think they're going to have a very serious conversation. She's going to confront him um, about, you know, what she's seen and just kind of ask him what's going on. And I'm hoping that Wyatt will be honest with her. And I honestly think that he will because he's not the type of person to, you know, beat around the bush and lie and intentionally hurt somebody. And she's just, she's en enraged because she's, feels like she's gotten herself into the situation. She let her guard down with him and, you know, trusted that they were going to be fine and he moved in with her and then uh, here's all this stuff. It's like it had been the calm before the storm, like I said, with Claire. All this drama starting to surround her and it's obvious to everybody but her. She kind of just feels like a fool. So she's going to confront him. I think he'll be honest with her and tell her, you know, he's he does have feelings for Claire, and unfortunately, they didn't have an opportunity to explore that and see what happened because of Stevie being pregnant. And I'm scared to see what the reaction is going to be. I don't know if they're going to break up. I don't know. So I guess what we're going to do is just have her, 
you know, I guess try to calm herself down a little bit. It's raining. I was going to go for a jog or something, but we can't. It's, it's, it's raining. Um, but anyways, we're going to try to calm down. And then when Wyatt gets home, we're going to confront him about the message and, you know, the way they were acting at the party that had her very concerned. All right, so Wyatt is home from work. He's in here, you know, cuddling with Brian, giving her some love and attention. Little does he know that he is about to get confronted by Stevie. She has been brewing a whole day. She's been actually, you know, working from home, just trying to distract her because, I mean, as mad as she is, she's very, very heartbroken. So I think what we're going to do is come over here and uh, make some fish tacos. Just not really lay into him head force full on she's going to cook some dinner and then maybe sit down and have a conversation with him because yeah she's mad but like i said she feels like part of this is her fault which is sad like honestly i feel for her like i feel like i could cry right now talking about it because it's really is a very unfortunate situation I mean, I feel for all of them. I feel for Wyatt because, you know, he feels like he is hurting Stevie or he's going to hurt Stevie. He's hurt Clara, um, you know, because of this. And then he feels guilty because he shouldn't feel that way because look at the beautiful little baby that he has. Then I feel bad for Stevie, obviously, because she knows that she's second best, that, you know, he... She doesn't have his heart completely. And then I feel bad for Clara because, you know, Clara feels guilty at the same time because of these feelings between them. And then poor Stevie. It's just a freaking mess, y'all. It is such a mess. Right, okay, so she's just going to ask him about his day, you know, kind of beat around the bush a little bit. And, um, you know, he's like, yeah, it's good. And she's like, look, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase because it's been bothering me all day. I want to know what's going on with you and Clara. I know I've asked you this before. We've had this conversation. You've told me that it's, you know, it's nothing. But, you know, honestly, there's something going on. I noticed the way that, you know, you and her were looking at each other. I noticed the way that y'all were, that y'all were, um, looking at me making sure I didn't hear the conversation um and whatnot and and I, I accidentally I didn't go through your text messages I, I know I shouldn't have looked probably it was your messages but why did you get her a slablet like why would you get her such a, a meaningful gift because apparently it was meaningful to her and he's like, seriously, you went through my phone? And she's like, no, I told you I didn't go through your phone. I just happened to notice that she texted you. And you know what? Honestly, I'm, I'm about sick of it. I'm sick of the lies. I'm sick of feeling like everybody knows what's going on but me. I feel like an absolute fool while you're making me out to be a fool. And he's like, what? Stevie, this is crazy. And she's like, look, I just want you to be honest with me. I've asked you from the very beginning when I found out I was pregnant. Before I found out we were pregnant. When we first went on our date, I told you to be honest with me, and you lied. He's like, no, Stevie, I didn't lie. I do care about you. You do mean a lot to me. You know that. You know, you've been my number one girl since since college, you know, since, you know, we had that class together, and I do love you. I do care about you. I'm, I'm not lying. And she's like, tell me, look me in the eye, and tell me that there is absolutely nothing going on between you and Clara. Look at his face. He's like, well. <laughs> He's like, look, there's nothing going on. I'm not cheating on you. There's nothing romantic going on between us. But to be honest, if you really want the complete and honest truth, Stevie, you're right. I do have feelings for her. I, I do. And she's like, I knew it. I knew it. Why couldn't you tell me that? You and her have had this conversation, haven't you? And he's like, yeah, we've talked about it. But we decided that, you know, because of Ryan. And she's like, no, not because of Ryan. Don't bring Ryan into this. It's because of me. It's because I got pregnant. And he's like, no, this is this is our problem. It's not your problem. It's, it's, it's not a problem. That baby is not a problem. It's just, it's hard. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't help the way I feel. And she's like, I know you can't help the way you feel. That's why I just wanted you to be honest with me. That's all I wanted was for you to be honest with me. And, you know, he's like, I, okay, I do. I have feelings for her. And 
like I said, it's unfortunate we didn't, you know, have a chance to explore that and see if there was anything there. It's, she's one of my good friends, and she means a lot to me, and she's always going to be in my life. She's like, well, I can't be in your life with you and her at the same time with this confusion. You need to figure out what is going on between you and Claire. I'm not going to sit back and feel like a fool and feel insecure and like the second option. So... Riot, you need to move out. We need, we can do this co-parenting thing together. We need to take a break. You need to figure out what you are doing, okay? I, I can't do this anymore. I can't. So, I'm going to have her break up with him. Oh, God, which is sad. It really is. But, like I said, she's doing this not out of spite and to be mean it's just she's hurt okay and she feels like this is the best option for them is for him to move out and figure out what he wants if that means that they're not together anymore and he ends up with stevie and not stevie he ends up with claire then so be it but at least she will know the truth and she's you know, not going to get strung along and put, played. And she's like, you can come over anytime and see Ryan. I will bring him, or I will bring her over to see you. I mean, I just, I want us to figure this out. Okay? I'm sorry. And, uh, he, yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm going to bed. You can sleep on the couch if you want. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wyatt, what are we going to do? <laughs> He's going to eat him some fish tacos. But, yeah, that's where we're at. They're broken up now. It's sad, I know, and I hope you guys aren't mad at me, but you have to hopefully understand where I'm coming from with this decision. There's always going to be something there between Clara and Wyatt. He knows that, and Clara knows that, and Stevie, unfortunately, knows that. And the only way for Stevie to be happy is to be out of this relationship where she feels like, you know, she's just in it because she's the mother of his child. And, unfortunately, I don't think that Wyatt is going to just jump on Claire. He's he's heartbroken. He is. He feels like this is all his fault. He feels like he has, you know, let his daughter down. He wanted to be here with her and, you know, take care of her. He did not want this to happen. Uh, so, I think what we're going to do is probably just, of course, she told us we need to leave. <laughs> um, he's not going to move back in with Wyatt and Clara out of respect for, you know, the two of them. Uh, he doesn't want to, like, invade their privacy and, you know, with the confusion of the situation and out of respect for Stevie, he's going to, you know, maybe get an apartment on his own for now and, he just needs time to figure things out. Um, so I'm going to have him come in here and go to sleep on the couch. And tomorrow we will figure out what our next step is. Okay, so Wyatt is in his new home. He actually took the day off um, and he was trying to figure out what he's going to do because Stevie wanted him gone. She just wanted him to figure out, you know, what's going on with himself and what he's going to do. And He's really got to make some decisions and he needed some space. He did not even tell Carter and Claire what happened. He was looking for some apartments, but he really did not want to, you know, have an apartment because of Bella, you know, having a dog in the city, especially a big dog like a German Shepherd. It's hard. He wanted her to have a yard to run around in, but he was kind of short on time. But thankfully, somebody from work hooked him up with a house that they had up for rent. So he was able to move in. He's still in the process of moving in. So let me give you a little tour of where... Wyatt will be staying so he is in Willow Creek staying in this cute little house it's really cute it's two bedrooms so it's perfect so on the weekends that he has Ryan she has a room but as you can see he still is you know trying to get everything moved in and settled in the house came like partially furnished so he didn't have to buy a couch a table appliances or bed or anything like that he just brought you know his TV radio his computer uh, so he could work from home and all that sorts of stuff so yeah it's really early in the morning it's five o'clock he's actually making him some coffee because he's been up all night just trying to figure out what the hell he's going to do and how his life just <laughs> got so complicated and he knows that he has to make a decision 
and uh, he, he just doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want to jump into that decision. He's kind of putting off talking to Clara about it because he doesn't want her to feel guilty because he knows Clara, and Clara would feel awful. She'd probably go and confront um, Stevie and just try to explain her side of the story, and he does not want that to happen because Stevie is so aggravated and annoyed right now and just pissed off that she might snap on poor Clara, and Clara is just too nice. She can't handle that, so... Oh, big decisions, big decisions. I think what we're going to do before we talk to Claire, I think the smart thing to do is probably going to be to call over Carter and uh, kind of ask Carter what he thinks we should do uh, because, you know, Carter does know that there's obviously some tension and some, you know, chemistry between his best friend and his sister and while at first it was kind of like, okay, weird, I don't like that, but, you know, they're older now, it's not a big deal, so... Uh, I think it's time that we're honest. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I'm going to have him love on Bella. Poor Bella. She has been, like, bounced around from, like, house to house. But she loves having, you know, a yard to run around in. As soon as we got here, she was running around. So I'm glad we decided to, you know, rent this house instead of rent an apartment. But anyways, I do believe that um, Carter has work today. So I don't really know if he is... Uh, up early but we're gonna send him an energized text maybe it'll trigger him to invite us to the gym if not we'll just call him and see if he wants to meet us there before work get a quick little workout in and really just uh just uh <laughs> unload our our struggles <laughs> onto him you know good friend but you know carter he feels kind of guilty see that's another thing he feels guilty coming to carter and telling carter all these issues he's got going on when Carter just got rejected, you know, by Sophia. He's going through a heartbreak of his own, but, you know, that's what friends are for, so he is going to, looks like uh, Carter is not going to invite us to the gym, so what we're going to do is meet Carter at the gym for a morning workout, try to see what his advice is, if, you know, he has any advice, hopefully he can offer us a little bit of insight on maybe where Clara's head is and what he should do. All right, so they are at the gym. They've been working out for a little bit. And like I said, I do believe Carter has to go to work shortly. So I'm going to come over here, kind of like express our admiration to him and kind of cut to the chase of why I invited you out. It's not just to unload my problems on you, man. You are my bestie. You know that. You're my best friend forever. <laughs> All right, so he's like, look, here's the thing. Me and Stevie broke up. And he's like dude what i know it looked like they were just super excited to hear that news but <laughs> wrong interaction there carissa but anyways he's like are you serious what happened he's like well she got upset over me giving clara the slablet and she thinks there's something going on between me and clara and she said she feels like a fool and she want wanted me to get out and just you know find out what I'm doing with my life <laughs> and what, what what decision you know I'm gonna make and um, obviously Carter has to go to work like I said he does have work uh, so he's like look dude I think that she's right I think that obviously there's something going on between you and Claire that y'all need to figure out um, I'm not gonna say anything that's up to you but Stevie's not stupid, and I love you forever. You're my best friend. If you want to pursue something with my sister and see if something's there, then I'm happy for you. <laughs> I'll be there to support you, but, you know, I'm going to have Stevie's back, too, because she's also my friend. He's like, yeah, I don't want to get into between that friendship. I just wanted to know what you thought, and, you know, Carter's just like, I think that you need to just follow your heart. Uh, so... Yeah, good good conversation, bro. Good conversation. <laughs> oh, all right, so anyways, we're going to have him come over here and run with the chest out a little bit and just kind of clear his head. And uh, like I said, he's not going to jump right into his next step, which his next step, obviously, is to talk to Clara about the situation. You know, Carter said he wasn't going to say anything to Clara. Clara has no idea there's any sort of problem between Stevie and Wyatt and that she's the cause of it. She has no idea. Uh, so he wants to, you know, give it a little bit of time and um, 
you know, just, just get used to being on his own officially and being a, a co-parenting or, you know, separated with his baby mama, which, like I said, that's the hardest thing, I think, for him is, is not being able to see his little girl like he had hoped. That's why he had moved in with Stevie. At first, when they found out they were pregnant, he had come to the conclusion, and they both had come to the conclusion, hey, we're going to take things slow. We're not going to move in together. We're just going to, you know, be friends. Or we're, we'll be boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, whatever, you know, yada, yada, yada. <sighs> well, <laughs> he had the baby. Ryan came in, stole his heart, and he did not want to be away from her. So he was like, look, I think it would be better if I'm here, you know, especially while she's a newborn, to help you with her it's going to be hard and of course stevie was like yes please i agree i think we had kind of came to the wrong decision but anyway so it's a little hard on him not being with ryan he just kind of feels like a failure as a dad which he's not don't get me wrong he's not at all but that's how he feels so we're going to cook some i guess we'll cook kirk 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 cook some fruit salad here uh, we'll do a serving size of four. And tomorrow is a New Year's. So that's going to be exciting. I think we're going to have Wyatt and Carter hang out together because oh, Wyatt has been pumping Carter up for New Year's, dude. You know, a big celebration, big party. You know what? You finally got the closure that you need from Sophia. I think it'll be good for you to move on. So, essentially, they'll both be going out celebrating New Year's as single men, which, uh, you know, Wyatt's not that simple for him because he's dealing with, you know, Stevie and Clara drama. But as far as Carter's concerned. He's ready to see, you know, who's out there. Hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll have some some b eligible bachelorettes out there for our boy Carter. And, yeah, he's just trying to look on the bright side as he's, you know, whipping up this fruit salad that, you know, things, you know, obviously are not going as he had planned. But he does have a beautiful, healthy little girl that he loves with all of his heart. He has this nice house, this, you know, well, it's not his, he's renting it, but he was lucky enough to have a friend that hooked him up with his house, uh, and, you know, he's got really good friends, and one of those friends being Stevie, even though they're broken up. She's still a good friend, because she did it in a nice manner, as in breaking up with him, like, I want you to follow your heart, Wyatt, if Clara makes you happy, be with Clara, figure it out. Oh, so he's got a lot of figuring out to do, I know. Trust me, I know. Like I told y'all, it was the calm before the storm. Uh, what is all this? What is going on? Petting Bella. Oh my gosh, I hope my game's not glitching. I seen somebody posted that on Twitter that their game was doing this then crashing. So real quick, let me save it. Just in case that happens, I don't want to lose my progress I made here. But anyways, y'all, I think what I'm going to do now is, um, okay, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, probably have him come over here and mop up and clean up the house a little bit once he gets done eating. Um, like I said, it is about to be New Year, so I'm not going to worry about putting up any decorations or anything like that. We need to finish unpacking. Um... So I think what we're going to do is text Stevie. I do believe Stevie went back to work today. Um, so her mother, and or I'm just kidding, not her mother. Her uh, friend uh, is babysitting for us. I was going to say mother, but I forgot Stevie doesn't have any family. So she has a friend that is babysitting Brian. And um, so he's just going to text Stevie and, uh, you know, make sure Ryan's okay. And, you know, how is everything going and uh, I hope you have a good day. Oh, he's such a good guy. And I know it's probably complicated. And I'm sure y'all have mixed emotions about everything because I do too. But he's a good guy. He really is. And I've told y'all from the very beginning, he is genuinely an amazing guy. And he's always wanted the relationship his parents had. He wanted the 
first person he married, his one and only true love to be his one true love forever. And he, he struggled with that, you know, knowing Stevie liked him and then he had these feelings for Clara. He struggled from the very beginning. And of course, you guys know that her getting pregnant was not my plan. I did not try for a baby. I did have Risky Woohoo on, but was not expecting her to get pregnant so quick. So I just kind of rolled with the punches and it complicated things for our boy. But anyways, looks like our neighbors have come to greet us. So we're going to... Okay. Oh, look, it's Rusty Braswell. I thought we already knew him. All right, Rusty, that is Sophia's dad. They live in the neighborhood too, but anyways, we're going to greet all of our new neighbors here. Thank them for coming. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this part up here because uh, the next part with the with seasons we are going to be celebrating new years i think it's going to be a lot of fun lots of uh partying a lot of uh maybe bad decisions i'm not really sure we'll see <laughs> i mean carter's got a got a plan to go wild for the night <laughs> and also um i don't know maybe claire will show up and i don't know there's so many possibilities i'm kind of anxious and excited to see what's going to happen so i'm going to wrap this part up here because a lot has happened especially you know for wyatt obviously he you know, ended up break, breaking up and splitting up with Stevie and being separated from his child to move it into this new house. So big changes in his life, but I think they're going to be for the better. And I need y'all's opinions on what y'all think he should do. What do y'all think he's feeling? What do you think the outcome of this is going to be? Please let me know in the comments down below. Give this a video a big thumbs up if you like it subscribe if you have not turned on that notification bell so you don't miss a video and with that being said i will talk to y'all later bye